Thanks, Stephen. Um, hi, everyone. Good afternoon, good morning, or uh, wherever you are. Uh, I talk about vector tiles in, QGI, uh, in QGIS. I'll do a brief introduction and uh, looking at the rationale behind why we should have vector tiles um, and then looking a bit more in details at the uh, implementation, how you can add your vector tiles data, how you can style and label them and how you can create vector tiles from your QGIS and hopefully a quick demo. Uh, we are Lutra Consulting, uh, as Stephen mentioned, core contributor to QGIS. In addition to QGIS, we have got uh, a bunch of products and open source projects to complement QGIS for uh, data collection, web publishing, and data management and synchronization. You can look at those. The links are in the presentation. And directly diving into vector tiles and why we need vector tiles in general and looking at some of the history of vector tiles. Um, vector tiles are uh, pockets of uh, uh, data uh, that contains uh, uh, those uh, pockets of geometries contain uh, sublayers and each sublayer can have point line polygons inside. Uh, usually it contains also, uh, in addition to geometry, it uh, contains uh, simplified attribute table as well. So if you look at uh, vector tile, as uh, uh, you zoom in, you will see different tiles. And for each, each of those tiles, there are a series of geometries which are clipped to the extent of those tiles. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, geometries are simplified. So if you look at the uh, dashed line uh, representing the actual vector geometry, and then uh, the blue polygon is a representation of the same geometry in vector tile. Uh, you can see uh, it has got some probably topological problems uh, and it missed out some of the areas. That's why it's simple. Then um, the question that usually comes up is why not raster tiles and uh, stick with raster tiles? Uh, with vector tiles, usually they are uh, uh, smaller in size uh, and it, because it's used widely for web, uh, it means that it's uh, less data transfer. Uh, it allows you uh, dynamic styling uh, and labeling. Uh, so it makes the whole map creation uh, uh, very flexible. Uh, it allows you to um, uh, over zoom on, uh, to your map so you don't see pixelated image unlike raster tiles. And you can have more interactive maps uh, so getting information from attribute tables uh, because the uh, rendering and uh, rasterization is done from the client side it's less, uh, uh, and also the styling, so it means less uh, load on the server. Well, uh, with raster tiles, you don't have uh, load on server to um, dish them out, but for creation, uh, it will be definitely faster to generate vector tiles. This is a vector tile for OS Zoom stack. Uh, you can add it uh, to your, uh, for example, now QGIS and then apply the style. So as you can see, the style can change and the data on the line doesn't change. Uh, you have got all the geometries and attribute table and you can uh, apply the style from your QGIS or client side. Uh, and uh, allowing uh, flexible and dynamic maps. Uh, this one, for example, you can rotate the map canvas and the labels you can see they are stay um, uh, properly orientated. So the uh, with raster tiles, the whole map would have been rotated. But with this one, you have got flexibility and you have got dynamic labeling. Uh, it also allows you for localization. For example, in this one, I have uh, uh, set it in a way that you can uh, change. It automatically changes the style based on QGIS locale. Um, so 
this one, I changed QGIS uh, environment to uh, Japanese and all the labels turned into uh, Japanese uh, version. It's the same as this one, but uh, rendered with the different style labeling. And uh, the quality of map for over zooming, uh, you can see the same data, uh, one uh, containing raster tiles and over zoomed, and you can see the pixels, but with vector, the symbology stays uh, uh, nicely intact and uh, the image is not uh, pixelated. And uh, you can have interactive map from those. Again, OS uh, zoom stack, you can have a look at the uh, vector tile and query the geometry, see the uh, attribute tables. So you don't uh, get a bitmap rendered of the data. You have to some extent some of the data. And in terms of uh, generation of the tiles, this is a benchmark Esri did uh, a couple of years ago. And uh, you can see, for example, for raster tiles, uh, creation of the earth uh, there, we are talking about 20 terabyte of data and weeks to create, but with vector tile, it's gigabyte and it's hours to create. And one is produced on a very beefy server, the other is just a desktop machine. Again, the numbers are really, for vector tiles, uh, are quite significantly low. Um, and then another question is, uh, why vector tiles and not just simple vectors? Uh, again, vector tiles are smaller in size and it's because usually used for base maps, uh, it's simplified geometries and it's easy to serve. Um, you have uh, standard format and protocol, uh, so you can easily serve the data with vectors. Each vector has got its own specification and it's difficult to serve. Uh, and the common use cases for uh, vector tiles are web mapping. Uh, it's uh, quite powerful because you can just send uh, uh, data and then even the description for the styling and the client side uh, parses the data and creates the map on the fly for you. Uh, you can allow some sort of querying the data uh, and it's easy to serve. Uh, with mobile, um, again, rasterization is done from the client side and because the tile sizes are small, uh, if you want to cache data mm, for offline use, it's uh, relatively small. And if you were to use it for desktop, uh, you can use global, uh, for example, OS uh, OpenStreetMap is around, uh, I might be wrong, around 100 gigabyte, uh, up to zoom level 14, and you can uh, have good quality background map create out of it without uh, blurry images. Uh, and uh, in addition to that, in open source, um, we have got a number of tile servers uh, where you can uh, serve your tiles, um, which most of you are familiar with. Uh, and then there is a, a question why not use vector tiles for everything. The, it's not good for geoprocessing and analysis. As I mentioned, it's only ideal for base maps. Uh, it contains simplified geometry and the geometries are clipped to tiles. So uh, it uh, doesn't have uh, topological uh, validity or even network connectivity to do any analysis or geoprocessing on the data. Uh, and there are a number of standards to create and serve uh, map tiles, um, uh, either using HTTPS similar to um, the raster map tiles using zoom level and the address of the tiles. Um, then you have got uh, uh, the MP tiles format where you, your uh, vector tiles can be packaged inside a, um, a SQLite database. 
and there is also specification uh, that uh, OGC is working on for uh, uh, adding uh, vector tiles directly in GeoPackage. So that will be exciting. Uh, for encoding the data to vector tiles, uh, there are two common uh, ways. One is uh, Mapbox vector tile, which is uh, widely used, and the other one is uh, GeoJSON, which is text beta base and usually takes longer and larger tiles. And for styling, uh, the most common one is again Mapbox uh, uh, GLJSON style. Uh, so this is a kind of a quick background uh, on um, vector tiles uh, uh, so far. And uh, in QGIS, there has been uh, an attempt earlier, uh, attempt to implement vector tiles and it was through a plugin, which was a great effort. Uh, it allowed you to load your vector tile uh, from either an, an MB tile or from a um, uh, URL, but uh, it was uh, having its own limitations, uh, uh, mm, slow rendering and performance issues, and also it wasn't possible to uh, allow um, overlay data on 2D or 3D map views or uh, print composer. And also because it parsed data as vector, you would have ended up with several vectors and it cluttered your QGIS project. Uh, so we decided uh, to run a crowdfunding uh, campaign uh, and ask QGIS community to introduce, uh, uh, to help us to introduce a new uh, layer type, data type in QGIS. Uh, uh, the core assumption was that a vector la tile layer is not a vector layer. It should be treated by its own widgets and its own tools inside QGIS, its own renderer parser, so uh, that was the main idea behind it. And then uh, we allowed, we wanted to have a way of adding users, adding the data, uh, either by the normal HTTP or a path or um, to XYZ, ZXY PDF files, or just directly uh, dragging and dropping MB tiles. Uh, in addition to loading data and rendering data, uh, we have added some uh, widgets to uh, convert the popular Mapbox GL to uh, QGIS style. Uh, that uh, uh, um, script has been further uh, developed and extended by our friends at MapTiler. So now you have got pretty much a good uh, tool set to convert uh, Mapbox GL to QGIS styles, uh, which is a part of the plugin I briefly show you. And also once you have got that uh, as a starting point, uh, we have some tools in QGIS to allow you to style the data, add filter, apply a different color or set labels similar to vectors that you would have applied style to. Uh, and uh, in addition, uh, we have also added uh, uh, a, a couple of uh, vector uh, tile algorithm in processing toolbox to create vector tiles directly from loaded layers in QGIS. Uh, and the, the, on, on back of this, uh, uh, MapTiler has uh, updated their plugin uh, to use this native uh, uh, renderer in QGIS. And now you can install the plugin and load uh, really good quality maps uh, vector tile in QGIS from the plugin. It even contains open, uh, UK uh, OS open Zoom stack. All this effort was made possible through a crowdfunding campaign uh, a contribution to this crowdfunding campaign. You can see the list of uh, individuals and organizations and um, special thanks to Stephen and uh, the rest of OSGO UK who also contributed to our campaign. Um, yeah, it was made possible and uh, we 
have it now in QGIS 3.13. So from um, the release date is on Friday. So from next, early next week, you can try the feature. Okay, so let's have a look uh, at some demos. Uh, back to sharing. Okay, this is um, uh, a tile set. I've added uh, a new menu option appears in your QGIS 3.14 and it allows you to create uh, a new connection, uh, add your tile, uh, uh, the, and the name and the zoom level setting. And then you can load the data directly in QGIS. As you can see, you can zoom in uh, if I add, uh, piece of code here, you will see the tile boundaries uh, within QGIS as well for debugging purpose. Um, so uh, these are the tiles and then uh, you can apply styles to these tiles. Uh, let's say um, you have saved some SQ, uh, some QML files for your uh, data and then you can see QGIS uh, style panel now shows the different uh, label, different classes, different labels and filters applied and also the zoom levels you set in. Uh, and as you zoom in, the different features and labels will appear. You can easily change the style by loading another one. Uh, bright. Let's use bright with locale. Uh, so this one has got some locale setting. If I go to QGIS and change the uh, locale to, let's say, Italian. Probably I need to reload the QGIS, but uh, the labels will appear as uh, yeah, there you go in Italian um, language. So these all settings are done here. As you can see, these kind of settings wouldn't have been possible having uh, raster tiles. Uh, then uh, rotation, for example, if I rotate the map, you will see the uh, star, the labels stay aligned. Um, then you can have also um, uh, file-based uh, data as well. Uh, let's look at, for example, Switzerland data. This is all Switzerland data up to zoom level 14 in one MB tiles. Again, you can uh, load the style. Uh, probably with Switzerland, we definitely need locale because they speak lots of languages. But Two minutes, Sabre. Okay, so this is uh, uh, how it's rendered. In addition to that, we have got uh, a couple of plugin, uh, uh, a couple of uh, 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 tools to create uh, vector tiles, either as a directory or as an MB tile. Uh, and uh, we have got a list of uh, features we would like to uh, include in future QGIS. Uh, um, a bit more improvement on the user interface for filtering and styling data. 
supporting custom coordinate reference system uh, for uh, your tile sets and uh, uh, handling uh, Mapbox GL format, either exporting or importing a bit better. Uh, we'd like also to add vector tiles to QGIS server, possibility to browse attribute table, uh, support uh, for geopackage uh, vector tiles when this, once the specification is uh, finalized, uh, and uh, support for WMTS server like GeoServer, which are capable of sending vector tiles and also support for tile JSON. So if you are interested in any of those, feel free to contact us. Okay. Okay, thank you, Saba. Um, well, firstly, I wanna say that was, you know, I just wanna thank you for that fantastic work. Um, I think all of the team at OSGO UK are proud that we were able to help sponsor that the vector tiles implementation in QGIS. And for all of the people listening, um, when you sponsor OSGO UK, uh, when our corporate sponsors sponsor us, the bulk of that money goes, is distributed to projects that our members vote for. And um, so indirectly, if you make a donation today, a little bit of that money will eventually find itself to the QGIS project, the GeoServer project, the PostGIS project, all of which we've supported um, and opened theirs in the last year or so. So that's just something to bear in mind. Sabah, I've got some questions for you. James asks, is WMS provision of vector tiles also supported? Uh, no, that's, uh, I think it's the, one of the features in our wish list here, so. Right. At the moment. Um, no. No. Um, so Marcel asks whether HTTPS is also supported. Uh, HTTPS? Yeah, as a source. Uh, yeah, that's uh, where it's, uh, I just briefly showed you. Uh, so for example, this is uh, a Zoom stack and uh, with, uh, or um, open map tiles, um, uh, sorry, map tiler or others. Yeah, you can directly add those uh, HTTPS formats, the URLs. Okay, and Jin asks, um, is it possible to edit a style file using QGIS? Yes, that's correct. That's the idea. You can uh, easily change the style and create your own QML file. Okay, and... Um, I'm not sure I understand this, but maybe you will do. Lorenzo asks, I'd like to ask if it's possible to create vector tiles of elements that are not defined inside the open map tiles. Uh, not defined. Well, if you have it in some way or form in uh, QGIS as a vector layer, as a normal vector layer, yeah, there is... Uh, um, there are algorithms in QGIS processing tools now to allow you to create your own vector tile. Okay. Um, gosh, we're getting a lot of questions for you, Sabah. I think um, if I, we don't get through all the questions, everybody, I encourage you to, um, to message Sabah afterwards at Lutra Consulting um, and ask him your questions then. Tom asks, how fully functional is the export to MVT algorithm? Does it compare well to other software for generating MVTs? Uh, in general, it's okay at the moment. It's a first attempt. Uh, I did some performance tests. It's not that great compared to, uh, for example, OGR or PostGIS, but uh, it's usable for a smaller size than a lower zoom level. But that's something we would like to improve in future releases as well. Okay, um, and Yujaval asks, how is the locale-based labeling set up in the demo project? Is it via QGIS variables? That's correct. It's a QGIS expression, so uh, yeah. And David Murray wants to know, what are the advantages of MB tiles over XYZ? 
Well, uh, NPTELS, it's all packaged into one single file and X, Y, Z, you will have uh, um, uh, a bunch of folders and files. I don't know in terms of serving, whether uh, serving uh, MBT, uh, MBT tiles will be uh, an overhead to decode from SQLite, but uh, in terms of file management, if you do it for just one project, probably it's easier to do it through SQLite. But I guess if you don't want to have it a uh, separate uh, handling of SQLite from server, it's easier to have it as a single uh, PBF file. Okay. And Mark Varley asks, what types of authentication do you support for remote tile sources? We access tiles hosted on an AWS cloud front, which authenticates with cookies. Is this possible? I'm not sure about cookies. At the moment, it supports API keys, but uh, no. Not cookies. I okay. And I think this is the last question. Uh, Stefan Keller asks, are there any shortcomings of the Starling language mapping problem? Not at all. No shortcomings. <laughs> no, there will be some <laughs> filtering and expressions that we would like to um, extend in QGIS to be more in line with the vectors, uh, handling attributes and uh, other types of expressions, but in general it's quite usable and uh, for first attempt and for first release. Okay, and I'm getting several people just saying well done, congratulations and things like that, so let's relay that to you. Thank and you my you. last question is from Bolo. Um, is it possible to export the style created in QGIS to a Mapbox vector style? Uh, not at the moment, but it's something we have in mind. Uh, from Mapbox to QML, QML it is uh, almost possible, but the other way around, it's probably for next releases of QGIS, we will look into that. Okay.